Hello everyone! It's been a while since my last video, but today it's a new story from me again. I was reshaping our bathroom lately, and a couple of minutes later I will share all the process with you. But before diving in all the remodeling, I will tell you what took me so long. I think it was the last of May when my last video appeared. Then we went on holidays to Sweden, we brought few decor pieces with us, and I began to edit a new video about how to make a space in the luggage for those holiday shoppings. And I just stopped in the middle of the editing, realizing that I don't want to move any centimeter further. I think I got some kind of burnout. I was thinking that my travel videos are not having great success anyway, although it takes the same amount of time to create them as my usual videos. And being one man, one woman orchestra, um, why should I butter for the forecasted fail? Does it make sense at all? I know there are millions of digital creators who are doing everything on their own. So I'm not telling here that I'm an exception by any means. I am just one of them. And then I went on contemplating what in general my niche is and that beside the filming, script writing in foreign for me language and editing, I'm also spending way too much time checking out the performance of videos, all those clicks and likes, how many new subscribers and how many new unsubscribers and waiting on the comments, hoping they will be not upsetting. Luckily, the most of times I have the most positive community ever. Thank you. And worrying about my edits, about my disappearing voice, about my pronunciation, the way I look like on the camera at various angles, and that my tummy is way too big, and how I'm telling something, and that somebody is bothering to write me a message that I should do something about my eyebrows. Bang. And on top of it, my back and my neck got so sore, so aching, that I had to go to the therapy because I barely could move. I thought, hold on, dear. You need a break. So what I did, I just ignore all the YouTube notifications. I didn't touch my camera for like three months at all. Therefore, was no material for the new videos and my voice is disappearing. I reduced my presence on the social medias in, in general. And I even stopped watching the videos of the other creators. Um, some sort of digital detoxication. I think we all need it sometimes. One day I opened my YouTube app and I saw a mass of messages asking whether I am intending to get back on YouTube. I talked about it uh, to my husband Christian and he said that I am home. That would be pity to abandon something what I created and worked so hard for three years. I am very grateful to the Chris and to everyone who wrote me. Big thank you. So I guess my journey on YouTube is not over yet. There were several changes by us at home. I also got a tattoo with the personal meaning to me. So I'm going to show those changes step by step in my new videos. I'll try to stick to two weeks schedule, but please don't regulate your watches relying on my uploads. So if it's something for you, hold on with me. But now really, let's talk the bathroom. So I created a new problem to myself, I know. And precisely, I challenged me to give our bathroom a new shape. I was already for long a second seeing everything on the display. Yes, that's how it was look like. You are literally visually bombed with all those exposed bits and bites, regardless of my attempt to keep them neat and tidy. On top of it, everything doubles after every travel adding unfinished travel size containers. And that way, I had three aims. To increase the storage space, to improve the appearance, and to make it rental friendly. I wanted to get a cabinet where I could hide everything, and it had to stay on oven legs. The problem is that the most of the cabinets mean for the bathroom, which I liked, were a wall mounted, 
To those who don't know, my husband and I, we are renting a flat in Luxembourg and I'm rather avoiding boring the holes in the surfaces, which are easy to destroy and tricky to fix. After several trips to the various furniture stores, I got a generous cabinet from IKEA, which initially isn't meant for the bathroom, but it has a good size and the legs, which by default is practical option for the cleaning underneath and it's also good in general when it's off the floor, because you know, the shower water leaks. I thought the glossy doors are practical and nice, but removing of the protective film wrap was the most difficult part of all the project. My plan was to hide in this cabinet all my jumble, meant for my small face and very long body, including their backups, which I could finally store upwards. And the towels, and the toilet paper rolls, and the cleaning supplies, and the laundry hampers. Let's make it happen. It turned out slightly different within the process, but isn't it always that way? I must have have three faces on seven legs for all this amount of creams I accumulated despite of constant purging. And so I decided to leave them not organized in the boxes where I could again forget about having them, but at the eye level on the display. That way I can see all at once, slow down on getting the new ones and use one after another. Off topic, but did you know that the tabs for the dentures gear are also perfect for cleaning the tube in the loo? I'm dropping there a couple of tabs every now and then. Works magic. The rest I organized within the various Muji boxes. Try to figure out which stuff I'm using more often and place them in the first line and then the backups behind them. I added an old hanging basket from IKEA to one of the shelves for organizing the electric appliances, which I'm almost never using. Makes sense. <laughs> Along with it, I ordered rechargeable lights with motion sensor, because I thought the stuff would be more visible if it was illuminated. Sometime, maybe in spring, I installed those lights over the kitchen sink. They've been a real game changer. I hate this expression, but it's so true. The lights come with adhesive holders and magnets, that way they are easy to attach and to remove. It's one of my the most favorite things from Amazon. By the way, the towels didn't make into the cabinet, the toilet paper also not, but I got the other solution for them and I will show you in a minute. But I did contain the hamper. For better ventilation, we are leaving the door open in the night. Nobody sees. <laughs> I wanted to replace also a couple of the other things which I didn't like. When you are renting, very often you have to deal with already installed features, which you might not like, but because of the contract restrictions, everything what was removed once have to be reinstalled back when you are moving out of the flat. In other words, you have to leave how you found or say bye-bye to the deposit. We love our deposit, so we are going to keep those removed objects until we move out of the flat.
The new toilet roll holder comes with the box. There can be hidden various items and I found it really practical. Okay. As I mentioned, there were no room for store the toilet paper in the cabinet, but I found this minimalistic design storage box from Yamazaki. It says it holds 12 rolls, but those from DM, if you know you know, are slightly bulkier, however, I could fit 10 of them in it. I wandered through the garden One more thing I never liked in this bathroom are those hand towel skewers. The first, we are using small towels and they are often simply sliding off on the ground. And the second, many tiny bruises on my tights made me to take my earrings off. With me. I've covered the holes in the wall with a couple of adhesive hooks. Basically, everything that doesn't require a new hole in the wall is rental friendly. We like it much, much better now. It got very empty here, and when I'm honest, a minimalist in me likes that way a lot. But well, for instance, the thief brushes would be inconvenient to use if I hit them. Well, it looked rather compromising than pretty. So I covered the mouth rinser with a solid craft paper and removed the label from the toothpaste. Better now. I've seen many bathrooms with the flowers in them and I was always wondering how in the world is possible to keep the plants in windowless bathrooms alive. The Google says you have to get two of them and rotate. Some plants, like Sansevieria, doesn't mind spending a couple of weeks with no sun. This particular smell from the rituals is absolutely lovely. However, the reds of the reed diffuser and the reds of the bathroom didn't go together well, especially when there is not much to look at, so I thought the green would be nice and replaced it. The old one I hid in the flower vase, the bottle I secured with the candle sticker, so it doesn't slide on the bottom of the vase. And I can still enjoy the smell without looking at it. Et voila! Here is before and afters. At this point of whether you call it reshaping or a makeover, it looks emptier, and I must say, the most I'm enjoying about the things that I don't see. And that I didn't have to make any new holes in the wall. What would you do differently? Write me in the comment section. said I have chosen the glossy door for this cabinet. It looks more high-end for me and it's well known that glossy surfaces are much easier to clean than those in matte. I'm still organizing and reorganizing. As I filmed it in the beginning of September, it's also got emptier now, so the end result might be again slightly different. But I am really, really, really pleased how it turned out. If you enjoyed it too, give me the thumbs up and subscribe for my future videos, because why not? Thanks for watching, greetings from Luxembourg, see you soon, adi!